Buster, thank you for coming today and sharing your story with us. Glad to be here. Tell me about the first race car you built, built there. I built a 62 model Chevrolet for Benny McDaniels. We had a lot of fun with championship at Birmingham, man, at Savory the same year. You were telling me a little bit earlier about a, your being in the stands and going to the races and having a desire to start racing. Well, I went every Friday night, and we sat in the same spot every Friday night. And Jerry McCormick had a wreck on the front straightaway right in front of us. Huh? And I said, that's not for me, you know. Right, yeah. Because Jerry got hurt pretty bad at that oh, time. Oh, he was, yeah. So I had made up my mind I was going to go in the pit. Lewis had him a car, so we was going to go out there, and uh, I was going to go help him in yeah. the pit. So I walk up to the back gate. Here goes Stanley in the air upside down, down the back straightaway. Right. It hits the pin. And I said, whoa, this ain't for me here, you yeah. know. <laughs> I said, this thing is there. Where you go? You know. Tell me some of the, the ones that you really enjoyed working with and knew that they had a lot, a lot of talent. Mike Alexander would probably be the best. You know, yeah. I mean, he really loved his race cars. Yeah. And he wanted to do good. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And he was, y'all were working at Bobby Ray's at that right. time. Right. We were yeah. building the cars at Bobby Ray's. Now, this was at Bobby Ray's house that we was doing all this. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. It wasn't a big shop then. Yeah. You know, Lewis is, uh, was building cars at Bobby Ray's. Okay. And uh, he built cars uh, for PB Crowler. And that's the car, that 48 orange and uh, white uh -huh. 48 car. Yep. That's the one that Daryl Brown drove, and Lewis built that car. And that's where Larry McReynolds got started in, right there. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And I remember. He worked out there with us, you know. He was a worker now. I mean, talking about, now he worked for Charles Finley in the junkyard, and when he got off, he come to Bob Ray's. Wow, yeah. And uh, he would stay out there at 8 or 9, 10 o'clock at night and work, you know. Bob Ray going to the house. He just made it, you know, what I'm talking about. He worked to get to where he was at. Yeah, he had, a, he had a big desire to make it. Yep, yeah, he sure did, you know. And, and took all the risk. Yep. You know, sure did. You yeah. know. No, Mike, oh, he was a lot of fun. I mean, you you go to the racetrack and have fun with him because he was always, never got mad, cut up with you, you know, and if he aggravated you, you aggravated him. We okay. Was, we was at Nashville one time, and he aggravated us all day one Saturday, and it was hot. Now, and, how, uh, if he is aggravating you, tell me how he's aggravating Just you. poking at you and stuff, okay. carrying on, you know. Yeah. And uh, anyway, when he got ready, he went up there to get introduced. We was pushing the car around. Right. So I went and got... 10 pound of ice and put in a seat. Oh, did you really? <laughs> so I used to cover up and I put it in there. And when he got in that car, he called me on rail and he said, Buster, put this ice in this seat. <laughs> I said, I don't know, buddy. <laughs> he told me, said, I'll get even with you. Did you really? Yeah, <laughs> yep, you know. But that, I mean, that's the way he was, you know. And he had to be comfortable in his own skin because you guys were going to the racetrack and you were really performing. You, right. I mean, yeah. you had good race cars. Right. And when he get ready to qualify, he said, well, we'll go out here and sing him a song now. Right. You know, and I mean, he could qualify. He had four tenths built in his fence. Is when that he, right? Yes, sir. I mean, yeah. he was going to go fast, you know. Yeah. So then you had a, uh, a run with Jackie McGuire. Right. And y'all had a, a really fast car and won a bunch of races. Tell us yeah. about that. Well, they started that new deal at Birmingham. At, uh, I forgot. I think they called them limited cars. Yep. And uh, so we said we'd be a one. So Bobby Allison, I went and talked to him about it. Me and Bobby's pretty good friends. He said, well, said I got a frame up there at uh, Huey Town High School. He said, go up there and get you one. Okay. Go up there and pick you one out. So I went up there and found one. And he told me, he said, carry it down there to uh, Bowen down there. And they'll sandblast it and said, I'll call him. And I said, Bobby, you ain't got to do all this. He said, I'm doing it. Don't worry about it. And that was in October. And we worked on that thing. And he called me one day and he said, you need to come down here. So I went down there and Bobby was in the big shop at that time. We went back there and he had a box full of stuff. And I said, what is that? He said, that's stuff for your race car. Wow. And I said, Bobby, I don't have the money to pay for that. He said, did I ask you for any money? Wow. And I said, no, but I said, I don't think you ought to do it. He said, me and you buddies. So, wow. You know, yeah. that's the way it was, you know. You tell me one time after he came in to drive somebody's car and he's following your car around the track and Jackie's driving it, correct? Right. And, yeah. Uh, he'd come in, uh, he'd drive him in uh, Roy Milligan's car. Okay. And uh, he told me, he said, you need to put 50 more pounds of spring in the right rear. And I said, Bobby, that car's running good. He said, Trust me. If he told me to do something, I'd do it. You know, I mean, that's just the way he could. I mean, he was just, he could tell what a car was doing, you know. Now, Larry Armstrong, you had a good career with Larry. Tell me about your relationship with Larry. Well, we, well, Jackie won the championship, so you had to move up. Okay. So I gave the car to uh, Jackie and him, and I had the motor and transmission and sold it to Lewis. He was going to build him one. Okay. So anyway, Larry comes in and, and wants to buy it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's gone. He said, well, build me one just like it. So anyway, I built him one. He said, you going to help me? And I said, yeah, I'll help you. So we won the championship with it. You, you you helped so many different people. Billy Melvin's going in to the Hall of Fame this year, and I asked him this question, what it meant to him 
to be going in the same time that you were going into the hall. And he was very thrilled about that. You know, yeah. he was very, because he has a lot of respect for you and you went way out of your way to help him. They started a class out there at Birmingham and I forget what it was. Anyway, Billy said, I want one of them cars. Mm -hmm. And he comes to the shop, it was at RPM. Mm -hmm. And we building this car and I'm telling you, we had nearly had a fist fight every day over that car. But we got through that car and he kept on crying, crying, crying about about calling and raising cane about it going to be illegal and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. Greg Pazanel, he had called me and wanted one of them. Mm -hmm. So we sitting in there, me and Billy's working on it. And I said, if you want to sell this thing right there, come to me and they'll buy it. Mm -hmm. And before he left there, Greg bought it, wrote wow. him a check for it. Wow. Well, Greg drove it. Billy didn't get to drive it. But later on, Billy got to drive it. Yeah. He said, man, I messed up when I sold this car. <laughs> he said, I messed up, you know, and yeah. uh, they won a bunch of races. Tell us about your time with Dennis Reno. How did you get hooked up with Dennis Reno? He got tired of me and Ken Smith out running him. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, he was a good guy. But yeah. Ken was a happy-go-lucky person. I mean, you know, but he could drive a race car. And if you told him that thing go around there wide open, he'd ask you, will it stay? Yeah. And if you told him yes, he's going to run it wide open. You know, right. that's just the way he was. So Dennis, come, I mean, Dennis comes over to your shop. Yeah, he told me, he said, I want to go in, with he bought RPM out, too. Okay. You know, and he said, I'm going to open up a parts house, and I want you to build cars in the back. You he, know, I didn't realize till just then that's where the RPM came from there. <laughs> yeah, he kept RPM, but he made it Reno Motorsports, you know. Okay. So we go out there one day, and we got we ride around all day looking for, for a building. We finally found one. That, then he said, well, let's just buy this. So I'll just buy this one, and I'll add a big one on the back, mm -hmm. and uh, Leland Shipman come out there and built the back part on it. And, okay. uh, and so we went to work, and John Osley was going in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He run the parts. So we just got started, and I built the first car, and that thing stayed leaning up against the wall for uh, three months, six months, you know. Dennis came in one day and said, I want that car put together. First time we carried the racetrack with Jerry, he said it was the sorriest race car he ever set in land. Then after that, it was the best race car. He said, anybody can drive that car. He said, it's a perfect race car. So, yeah, so you got to work with Jerry Goodwin. How many years did you, I mean, I guess the whole time he drove for Reno, correct? Just about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And tell us about Jerry as a driver. He was good. But we was at, we went to uh, went to Pensacola one night, and uh, it was one of Ken's cars. And anyway, we went down there, and uh, Jerry went out there to practice. And the car run for racetrack. Mm -hmm. He come in, he said, you can't drive his car. He said, it's pushing. And I said, the car can't be pushing the same thing. So we checked around in uh, John Cannon. You remember him? I didn't remember John. He was with me. And uh, he said, so let's just put some bite in it. We started putting bite in it. He go out there and he said, you didn't hip it none. So the next time I did it, I walked down the corner and looked at him, watched him. He go down there and the wheels are turned right ah. instead of left. Yeah. So he comes in and I said, Jerry, I said, I know what to fix this car now. He said, what? I said, it ain't loose. I mean, it ain't tight, it's loose. And boy, did he ever come apart. He told me, he said, as long as I've been racing, and I don't know when a car's tight or loose. You know, and he just told him, said, uh, said you need to listen to him. And we fixed it and won the race. Chris Mullinax, his brother Chris, I mean, yeah. uh, Chip. Chip, yes. Was he kept his car down at the shop. Yes. And uh, one night, Ken wasn't going to race. And I told him, I said, uh, I called him up. I said, you're going to go to the racetrack tonight. I said, I got you a crew chief. And he said, who? And I said, me. Yeah. He said, well, get it ready I'll meet you out there. So we go out there, and he's out there running, and he comes in, and he tells me, he said, we got a problem. Bro, over here, coming off four. Chip, that ain't the problem, buddy. He said, that's where it's bad at. I said, no, it starts right here, mm -hmm. and it winds up over there. You know? yeah. So we made a adjustment on it, and Jimmy Kitchen runs second, and he was fixing to lap him. We had bought, LC had bought at one of them 180-degree motors, Yeah. and Ken won two or three races with it, and then Dennis got caught on to it. Right. And Dennis, to this day, said that motor was in... Chip's car that night, but it wasn't. It wasn't. No, <laughs> it wasn't. You know, you know. Yeah. But, it, but Chip, I mean, it, that's what I'm telling you. You know, where you had he had to get confidence in me. You that's know? correct. Yeah. You know, and, and then what thing. you told him, and, and you yeah. changed at work. Yeah. Right. And you, and you know exactly off. right. You know, yeah. back in your early years with Lewis and 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 working with him, you came from Talladega, 
Right. And you went to work with the Clarks. Right. In their dealership, and I'd work on race cars. Okay. Inside. But Lewis was keeping the race car up. Okay. What does it mean for you to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? I don't like all that glory. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. And, and I always seem to see somebody else get in it, you know. Right. And uh, I never even thought about getting voted in. You know what I'm talking about? And, I agree. And everybody just kept on, I, you know, I guess I belong in it. You know. You do. There's no doubt you belong in it, you, you know. know. So, you know. And it's got to make you feel good to know that you're – the people that you work with and race with. Lewis is in it. And yeah. Lewis is in it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. I just, uh, and I'm paying for it now. Back when I was young, I didn't know what time was, you know. Sure. I mean, I just stayed in poverty until I got it where I wanted it. Right. And, and now I'm paying for it because yeah. I got old and, and can't do it like I used to. But I still love it. Right. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah. I've, I've had a lot of good times. And I've had a lot of bad times, you know. What were some of the hardest years you went through racing? I've never really had a hard time. You know, I've always had good luck. I ain't bragging, but I ain't, I've i always had good luck with the car to build, you know. You know, we talk about B.J. McLeod, you know. He come up here, and he was 15 years old. And, yeah. You uh, know. And racing, and, uh, and I put a he'd tear the body off, and I'd put a body on for him and everything. So they hired me for a year, made me sign a contract, and I went down there, and I was so proud when that year was up. Oh, yeah. I was ready to come back home, you know. <laughs>